Well, I must say it's been an honor to know Gatewood the number of years that I've known him. I met him back, it was Earth Day, and it was 1991, and we were filming segments for Time for Hemp in San Francisco. We'd gone up to San Francisco. Ed Rosenthal wanted to be a guest on the show, and we had anticipated spending the day filming a big interview with Ed and going over his library of books that he'd written. And uh, about an hour before I and the camera crew and the sound crew got there, Ed apparently thought it'd be a good time to drop two hits acid. So, uh, that did. did. <laughs> There wasn't much to interview at that point, yeah, you know. So we went down to uh, Earth Day a little early, and uh, Jack Hare had said that a friend of his by the name of Gatewood Galbraith was going to be around, and we should try to make it a point to get Gatewood on the program as a guest. And he said that Gatewood was running for governor of Kentucky, and I said, he's what? He said, he's running for governor of Kentucky, and I said, and he smokes pot? And Gate was, uh, I mean, and Jack Harris said, yeah, and he'll make a great guest. So you should make it a point to talk with him. Well, those of you who've known me a long time may know that my family has a political background in the state of Indiana. My mom was uh, the first female to be president of the county council in our area and in the history of, of Delaware County, and she broke a lot of ground. She was a woman's liber, as we called them back then, and she taught me at an early age the importance of one, standing up for yourself and being who you are and true to yourself, which Gatewood represented as a candidate, and she taught me the ins and outs of politics, and I knew after hanging out with Jack Hare that even though he had the truth about making paper and fiber and fuel out of this fantastic plant, that unless you make a change in Congress or you make a change in the Senate, you're not going to get a whole lot done. You're just going to be educating people about the truth. And when I heard that we had somebody from the marijuana movement running for governor of a state, that impressed me. And to that point, I had known Jack Hare and the intellectual aspects of this plant, of, this, of the history of this entire travesty. And we had worked on the California Hemp Initiative, and I saw with Jack Hare how through politics you can make change. But the idea at that time, when Gatewood was running for governor, coming out of the closet about smoking marijuana and talking about using the revenue that comes from generating taxes, from creating industries that are built on making fabulous products from this plant, on how we were saving the environment, and how we were saving dollars. It all made sense. And suddenly, not only did we have Jack Hare's knowledge, we had the sensibility of Gatewood Galbraith as a candidate. Now another aspect about Gatewood, unlike a lot of us in the marijuana movement, when I came into the marijuana movement, I came in because Jack Hare needed somebody to run his office while he went on the road to talk about paper, fiber, and fuel. Jack came into the movement because some lady introduced it to him and he wanted to smoke it and it was like, that's how he made the book about getting high, high, and this, you've all heard that story. Gatewood came into it because his grandfather and his great-grandfather and his great-great-grandfather and his great-great-great-grandfather and I think the people who knew Jesus in your family all grew marijuana. But they didn't grow it to get high. They grew it to make oil. They grew it to make rope. They grew it to make papers. They grew it as an industry and as they were doing so, they were making a environment that was considered one of the wealthiest commonwealths in the history of the United States. So here I had somebody from the belly of the beast getting ready to sit down and talk to me for the first time in a very rational 
intellectual way that I've never been dealt with before on my level in politics. My level meaning the voter. The person who's going to be voting in New York, Kentucky, Maine. Somebody who works on candidates, campaigns, and knows how to put together the importance of all the fine points of how we get a candidate elected. And all the key reasons. He didn't come in here and going, we want to get high, which we do. And, oh, and by the way, those of you who are very comfortable knowing that we've outlawed this plant because it keeps those of us from getting high. No, it just keeps you from getting taxes from us getting high. Um, Gatewood talks sensibility. The interview that I did with Gatewood, when I showed it to my parents, very conservative Midwesterns, running for office, my mom very well known in politics on a statewide level, very active campaigner. They were blown away. Their comment was, this man should be governor of Kentucky. When I got done talking with Gatewood for the very first time, it made sense to me that he should be governor of any state. He was the first person who was actually talking dollars and cents. Get rid of the smoke and noise industries and bring in the green industry. What do you hear now? I almost wanted to throw up in my own mouth when I heard Al Gore stand before Congress and talk about getting rid of the smoke and noise industry and bring in the green industry. And he said everything that Gate was said except for one word. Hemp. When President Obama addressed the United States after this horrific spill in the Gulf, he stood before America and promised to set us free from foreign oil, that we were going to take care of the problems that developed this mess off of our shores. And he said everything that Gatewood Galbraith has been saying for 20 years except for one word, hemp. I get a little agitated when I talk about our politicians because it's too late now for any politician to stand up in front of me and you and anybody else in this country and say, oh, I didn't know that you can make paper and fiber and fuel out of this plant. No, I had no idea we were spending this much money putting all these people away behind bars when we should take that money and put it into the school systems, my gosh, I had no clue to this travesty. Because people like Gatewood Galbraith has been standing on the corners of every street corner in this nation saying the truth, along with Jack Hare, along with Dr. Todd McCurria, and Keith Strop, and every other hardworking activist that has known the truth for 20 years. So when someone like Gatewood Galbraith says to me, he's running for office, for governor of the state of Kentucky, and it's his, his intention to take this plant, the revenue from this plant, and generate from it jobs that will benefit those people living in Kentucky. The revenue will help benefit schools for the children going there to get their brains fed in Kentucky. It's going to take care of the health care problems for the senior citizens that are facing a federal bankruptcy of our Social Security in 13 years in Kentucky. That he has a solution to the problems in Kentucky that will ultimately bring forward a solution to the problems in America. I believe him. He handed out 20 years ago a book to everybody who would pay mind to it, the Marijuana Feasibility Study. How you would take this plant, put it into our economy, begin to take it, put it into fuels by just changing the car a little bit here, by putting it into the papers and the fibers and the fuels and making the jobs and the revenue and the taxes and how we would stop putting the money into the prison system and into the court systems and we could save the taxpayer and we would have a beautiful society that was designed to educate our citizens 
and stimulate creativity and to bring forward an environment low on crime that would not cost the taxpayers a large amount of money. I believed him. He spoke to me as a voter looking for solutions to horrific problems that laid at my feet and the feet of my children. That was the impact that I had from Gateway Galbraith when he sat down and took time for him. Now, when Gatewood took time for Casper over the years, as a friend, amazing. I've had it with the planet sometimes. And I would call Gatewood up and say, I can't take it. The, the world's beat me. And I get off the phone, and I got it. I'm regenerated. I'm okay. Gatewood's been there when I've said, Gatewood, the world loves me today. It's been a good day. And as a friend, we've laughed. And I know the merit of this man, the character of this man. And there hasn't been a time that this man has let me down as a friend or as a citizen of my nation. The one thing I am most baffled by is how it is he has not been elected yet to the seat of the governor of Kentucky. He speaks rational, he speaks truth, he speaks plain English, and anybody who's going to go and put their vote on any candidate is looking for someone who speaks the truth in plain English. That's why I've never understood how it is a man who had the answers to the problems this state faces has yet been able to do so. Now, our country is facing a horrific time. We know that by the end of May, over half of the United States is in bankruptcy. Over 20 states have already filed bankruptcy. State stimuluses are going belly up. The federal stimuluses are being uh, taken from the states and uh, they don't know what to do. And by July, August, another 10 or 15 will be filing bankruptcy. By the end of the year, maybe all but three will go under. We are cutting funds for our children's educations. I hear every day how when I wake up, we're closing schools here in Oregon. We're shutting down libraries in, in, in California. We're cutting members off the police department in Iowa. Oh my gosh, we're laying off state workers in Ohio. I hear how our nation was held hostage by our Congress because they couldn't figure out this handful of money on this budget that equaled to what they spend on the war on drugs. What I don't hear from anybody but people like Gatewood and Ron Paul and Dennis Kucinich, what I don't hear from my Congress, what I don't hear from my Senate are answers. Answers that has been given to them in plain English and a book and books by Jack Hare, books called The Feasibility Study by Gateway Galbraith, books by Ed Rosenthal, books by Ethan Nadelman. Don't tell me you're stupid. Don't play me as stupid. That's why every time Gateway says he's running for governor, I always say, I expect to be in the governor's office with, with you on election day.